The story begins with the image of a princess leaving the island and being seen off by the people. The princess has set out on a ship to search for a new world. On Earth, although these three siblings were still very young, they had lost their father. The younger sister asked the older brother what to do in the future. The eldest brother encouraged her not to worry, everything would be fine. Back to reality, Akiro just woke up and was startled because it was late. He always has breakfast ready, and his brothers just take it out. The deadline was approaching, so Akiro was very busy. His younger sister, Machai, brought him food. She saw her brother blaming himself for oversleeping. He still couldn't find an assistant because he hadn't found anyone who could draw well enough. The deadline for submission is 7 a.m. the day after tomorrow. He needed to draw 10 more pages of sketches and then draw them by hand with a fountain pen but he still acted fine in front of his siblings and promised to take them to a barbecue after receiving the manuscript money. The children don't need it much, and they just hope their brother doesn't try too hard. After starting their career as a comic artist right after graduating from high school, their father passed away. Akiro chooses not to work but will live on his manuscript salary and rental income. Although his stories don't sell very well, Akira will still work hard to get his younger brother and sister to go to university. Suddenly, he received a call from editor Masahiro informing him that he had found an assistant for him. He tells Akira to go to the train station to pick her up. Akira quickly changed clothes and ran to pick her up. In front of him was a girl wearing a long black dress and a black umbrella on her head. She asked him if he was the author, Kakon Mamodia. Akiro told her to call him by his first name because he was afraid the two younger siblings would be embarrassed by their friends if their older brother was a manga artist. She introduced herself as Shiori Goshiki and came here to be his assistant. Akiro immediately took her to his house to work. He said that there was a separate room for assistance so she could change clothes. But Shiori didn't need to because this was what she wore every day. Actually, Akira was worried that her expensive-looking outfit would get dirty while drawing, so he sent her a jacket. In the blink of an eye, Shiori had sketched out the frame and background, and it looked beautiful. Akira complimented her and guessed that she had been an assistant for a long time, but she said that this was her first time. She only learned to draw through a book on how to draw Suzumanga and wanted him to give her the next job. Akira tasked her with coloring the character's hair black. Very quickly, Shiori finished, making Akiro extremely happy. At this rate, he will definitely finish on time. In the afternoon, the two younger siblings returned home from school, and were very happy to see that he had an assistant. Machai guessed that he must have made her work all day without any time to rest and also did not show her the bathroom and toilet. Akiro apologizes to her and lets Machai and Fumio show her around the house. Their house is a social apartment. All arrangements of people living in them, a manicurist, an office worker. Else their Kaunsen, Chibai. Akiro is a live-in landlord and manger artist. This is the communal kitchen and lounge. There's an oven, so those who want to cook use this a lot. This is the vacant room that assistants use to stay overnight. After having dinner, the two continued working until the evening. Machai and Fumio advise her to rest, but she says she's fine. Machai said Akiro is not good at relying on others. He always forces himself to make money and takes care of everything himself. Back in the office, Akiro tells Shiori to rest, but Shiori wants to finish drawing this page. She confided that she didn't read manga until she was 19 because her parents didn't let her. But her grandmother loved books and only showed her collection to her. Among them is Akiro's story. Shiori was very surprised that such an imaginary world existed in the world. It seems that Akiro's love stories written for young women make her very emotional. After a night of rest, the two of them continued to get up early in the morning to work. And so the hours passed, and in the blink of an eye, it was night again. Akiro quickly apologized and told Shiori to rest. But Shiori says she can still continue. Akiro counted the completed manuscript pages and discovered that a page was missing. He looked around and saw that it had fallen to the ground, and the sketch had only drawn a few lines. Shiori says she can continue, but Akiro doesn't want to bother her anymore. An all-nighter is too much to ask when she's not permanent yet. Shiori said that if you need help, just tell the truth. Akiro secretly thought that if he submitted it late, he would lose a month's manuscript salary. His mother had a new life, so he couldn't call and ask for money. He thought of the smiles and encouragement his brothers gave him, so he definitely had to try. So Akiro bowed his head and asked Shiori to help him. Just like that, the two of them worked on the last page together all night until morning. The job is done, Akiro just needs to print them out. But eventually his eyes kept closing, and when he woke up, he realized he had fallen asleep. Shiori was also asleep. 
he suddenly saw a pen stuck in her body. He immediately pulled it out but for some reason, the entire surrounding space had changed. Chiori scolds him for connecting with her spine, which means the two of them have signed a marriage contract. In her country, this is an act that is only reserved for married couples. She claimed that he secretly touched her body while she was sleeping. Hiro explains that he saw the thorn and thought it was a pen that stabbed her. Shiori also apologizes to him for thinking he was a pervert. She explains that she is the princess of the star people. She doesn't desire marriage born of mishap. She figures that love should come first. Hiro was startled and said that you shouldn't joke like that with a co-worker you don't know well. But Shiori actually understands Akiro quite well. She thought his art was simple in that magazine, so as practice, she started out by copying it. The more she traced, the more she could tell how much time and care was spent creating it. That's why she would say she knew him by his work. She said she wandered here from outer space. Their customs dictate that a marital union be formed with the one linked by her stinger. She was supposed to marry a partner of her parents' choosing. But she learned from the manga how wonderful and unfettered love and life can be, and she decided to leave the island. Suddenly, someone is ringing the bell. Masahiro comes to get the manuscript. Before leaving, he asked Akiro, why not draw some color pages? Akiro was very excited and agreed. Shiori has a dream about her people. She guesses that when she is this far away from them, their bond will weaken. She went to the dining room and met Akiro's cousin, Chihiro. After spending the morning with them, Shiori left. Suddenly, Akiro had a high fever. His brothers put him to bed to rest. When she gets back to the hotel, Shiori remembers that she hasn't sent Akiro her account number yet, so she sends him a text. Fumio saw the message and responded that he has a fever and will respond to you later. After a while, Shiori comes and tells Akiro to hold her hand. She apologized and explained that his fever appeared to have formed because she and he moved away from each other physically. Akiro also realized his fever had gone down as soon as Shiori entered the room. He was receiving retribution for being her betrothed, yet being far apart from her. Physical contact should lessen the burden. The two started holding hands. Akiro felt the space around him change, and his health got better. After Akiro fell asleep, Shiori revealed her blushing face. A while later, Akiro woke up and left the room. Fumio immediately ran to hug him. He pointed to Akiro, who was outside. She's looking at the vacant room sign here. She said she would rent a room at his house for convenience. She returned to the hotel and brought her luggage here. Seeing Akiro pulling weeds, she wanted to help him. Akiro refused because this was the landlord's job. But she ignored it and still sat down and pulled weeds with him. Akiro asks if she can cancel the contract. Shiori replied that she had asked her subordinates to find out how to cancel the contract. After helping Akiro weed, she asks Akiro to take her shopping. She needs to buy daily work clothes and necessities. She changes into many different outfits and wants Akiro's opinion. After the two finished buying costumes, they went for a walk and had snacks together. Shiori shyly discussed his contract with her. If she desired a genuine romance with him, would she really want it to be based on an accident? It's therefore important for her to be sincere. Akiro says it doesn't have to be him if they annul the pact. She can find someone else who is good for herself. Suddenly, Akiro sneezed and had to go to the bathroom. When he returned, he saw two guys approaching Akiro. They want to get to know her and meet her privately. Akiro walked over and pulled Shiori out of the restaurant. Akiro's actions startled Shiori, causing the surrounding space to suddenly become dark, and Akiro had a nosebleed. Shiori explains that he recently sneezed and had a nosebleed related to her. She explains that the retribution for unwelcome forceful contact manifests, as a range of physical maladies. She apologizes for constantly causing him trouble. Akiro doesn't blame her and is glad that she came to Earth, which makes her very happy. The next morning, Shiori tells Akiro that she read all 15 volumes of Master of the Lion's Fist last night. She was shocked when Master passed away but did not expect him to appear again in Episode 8. Akiro also agrees that the series is extremely good, but now is the time for them to learn about the safe way to avoid retribution. She goes to the train station while Akiro stays at home. Suddenly, he felt uncomfortable. It turned out that Shiori was being jostled on the train, making her uncomfortable. But Shiori's emotions will also affect Akiro's health. In short, they are fine if they are just one station apart. Last time, she was surprised when he yanked on her arm. So she wanted to try contact actions to test how the contract worked. Start with the prank of sneaking up behind someone and touching their face. They then proceed to try some actions, like in romance mangas, and are seen by Machai and Fumio, leaving them confused. Suddenly, Akiro's phone rang. 
Masahiro praised him for doing a great job, but current readers wanted romantic elements in the stories, so he wanted Akiro to revise the current plot. These days, Akiro has always had to think about how to revise the new plot. At this moment, Mocha arrived, making Machai happy. Mocha also rented a room here before. She brought some apple pie for everyone. Mocha has played with Akiro since childhood and is currently Masahiro's wife. She is the author of Master of the Lion's Fist, which makes Shiori very excited. Shiori wants to be Mocha's assistant, but Mocha needs an assistant with experience in digital drawing, while Shiori doesn't have any experience with it. Moko said that she will give Shiori her old tablet so Shiori can practice. Kiro is still tormented about accidentally deleting Moka's manuscript file because he is not familiar with digital drawing. Moka says it has an automatic backup function and there's still plenty of time, so she tells Akiro not to bother. Previously, Akiro was Mocha's assistant. All of Akiro's manga knowledge is taught by Mocha. Akiro's pen name is also taken from Mocha's name. Mocha then left, and Akiro returned to his desk. He suddenly had a headache and immediately went to see Shiori. He knew she was upset about something. She is feeling jealous of Mocha and finds herself falling in love with Akiro. Might be in love with you. After saying this, both of them blushed. Shiori ran back to her room. The next morning, Machai and Fumio want Akiro to take them to the zoo, but their smiles quickly ended because it suddenly rained heavily. So the outing was cancelled, so Akiro returned to his desk. But he couldn't concentrate and kept thinking about Shiori. Meanwhile, Shiori intended to go to the library today to find materials about digital drawing, but it rained. While thinking, she accidentally drew Akiro's face and felt embarrassed. There are also many paintings of Akiro on the ground. Shiori can't believe that she's so in love with him and remembers their old hangouts. That night, the two talked together. Akiro said that he was happy for the sentiment. But right now, it's hard to see himself in a relationship or marriage. Machai and Fumio are his only family. He wants to make them his priority. As planned, he would still like to annul his engagement to her. Shiori sees that the contract is punishing him, so she tells him to stop. But Akiro still wanted to express all his feelings. I get a sense that I'm lacking when it comes to emotional content. My dream job isn't stable, and I don't want more responsibility or to be a burden on anyone. But now I've fallen in love with you. Would you like to go out with me? Shiori was so excited that her face turned red, and she fainted. The next morning, Akiro's family planned to go to the zoo today because the weather was so nice. At this moment, Shiori appears, so Machai invites her to come along. Both of them blushed because they were on a date together. Aikiro wondered if he should tell Machai and Fumio. At the zoo, the four took a photo together. Unexpectedly, Shiori felt more excited than the children. The scenes in front of them resembled dating couples in manga. She also wants to hold Akiro's hand like other couples. But Akiro's hands were busy holding Machai and Fumio. Akiro saw a child standing alone and thought he was lost. But Akiro was wrong, and the boy's father was standing nearby. Shiori saw that Akiro's actions were very thoughtful, and her face was turning red. Machai felt something strange as both of them were blushing. Having no other choice, Akiro admits that he and Shiori just recently went on a date, surprising Machai and Fumio. Machai and Fumio were also very understanding, and they agreed to share Akiro with Shiori. At the giraffe barn, Fumio and Machai were always fascinated by observing them. Shiori wants to hold Akiro's hand like other couples, so their hands were touching each other, making Shiori so happy that she cried. Meanwhile, Shiori's parents and siblings are very worried about Shiori because Shiori has not contacted them for a long time. Her father thinks she is living a very happy life, while her mother thinks she is playful and irresponsible. The next morning, Akiro brings the manuscript, which has been edited to include romantic scenes and is praised by Masahiro. Seeing that Akiro was in a good mood, Masahiro guessed that Akiro was having something fun. His manuscript was able to succeed, thanks in part to Shiori's help, and he plans to ask her out. Suddenly Shiori walked out with a sad face because she failed the interview at two places recruiting assistants. Tonight everyone went to the barbecue restaurant to help lift Shiori's spirits. Shiori was eating grilled meat for the first time, so she was very excited. Machai teaches her how to grill meat to get the best taste. Akira wanted to cheer up his girlfriend, but he didn't know how to express it. When he got home, he felt so worthless because he couldn't encourage his girlfriend. He came up with a way that he would draw what he wanted to say on manga pages. The next morning, he went to Shiori's room and saw that she had been practicing drawing manga all night. He was shy about showing his manga drawings, but Shiori saw them, making him confused. She snatched it. Through the drawings, Akira wanted to convey words of encouragement and talk about the many things he knew about Shiori. 
He drew more than 80 pages, making Shiori very emotional. Christmas is coming, and Shiori's hometown is preparing to celebrate Christmas. It's been a year, and Shiori still hasn't had any contact with her family, making her mother quite worried. That night, Akiro and Shiori walked down the street. Shiori saw the Christmas tree for the first time and took pictures of it constantly. Akiro had always ignored these things before, but today he found them very beautiful. He told Shiori that he wanted to seriously date and get married. Shiori turned with a red face and asked is it alright if I kiss you? Akira was startled but still agreed. They kiss in front of the Christmas tree, and Shiori agrees to Akira's proposal. The next morning, Shiori receives a text from her mother saying that everyone at the shooting star is expecting her return. But Shiori says that if she goes back, she's afraid she won't be able to come to Earth anymore. That evening, Shiori's mother called her. She wants Shiori to immediately return and say that her entire life is here and only here. But Shiori says that there are also people here who care about her, even one whom she's dating. Akiro immediately grabbed Shiori's phone and greeted her mother. He introduces himself and is in a serious relationship with Shiori, shocking her mother enough to turn off the call. Shiori's mother immediately summoned the villagers to announce that Shiori was being deceived by a bad guy. She intended to go to Earth to bring Shiori back, but the people did not agree, because both descendants of the shooting star are not allowed to be absent at the same time. But the final decision is that Shiori's entire family will come to Earth to bring Shiori back. Meanwhile, Akiro is very worried because he has messed everything up. Shiori asked Akiro, are you willing to fight be my side? They will go to the shooting star together to find a way to annul the pact. They want to love each other without strings attached. Akiro agreed and took Shiori's hand. When they returned home, they saw Shiori's family waiting here. Shiori's mother stood up and asked Shiori to return. Akiro and Shiori's family begin to introduce each other. The conversation was tense when suddenly Machai and Fumio yawned. Shiori's father apologizes for coming here suddenly and says he will see Akiro again the next morning. The next morning, Akiro and Shiori go to the hotel to meet Akiro's parents. Shiori pulled out a summary of all of Akiro's advantages to prove he was excellent. Shiori's mother said that if Akiro knew what would happen if he was joined with you, he would turn tail and run. Shiori gets angry and says that Akiro already knows about her background. He was even stung by her stinger. This shocked the mother because the stinger was in Shiori's butt. Akiro immediately explains that it was an accident. The mother forced them to annul the pact. Shiori agrees, but she will continue to work here. The mother asks Shiori, have you drawn anything that anyone values? She believes that Shiori continuing to stay here is wasting her money. Akiro says that although she is currently just a support person for manga authors, she is doing very well at her job. He took out the manga where all the backgrounds and treatments were done by Shiori. He wanted to prove to them that Shiori had always tried to work and not just live carelessly like they thought. The father said that he would give Shiori another year to stay in this place and lower her allowance a little. The mother also temporarily accepted, and next year she will come to pick Shiori up again. Regarding the issue of annulling the pact, both of them also did not know about this matter, so they will send some related documents after they return. Everything seems to be temporarily resolved, and the couple can breathe a sigh of relief. The next morning, two people named Mamaji and Kego came to meet Akiro and Shiori to help them annul the pact. Mamaji brings a forcep made from Yobai stone. They will use the force to remove the princess's stinger from Shiori. Mamaji began taking Akiro's measurements to prepare the outfit to perform the ritual. She wonders if his falling in love with her is due to the power of the pact, causing Akiro to freeze. Meanwhile, Shiori is taking care of Kego because he is seasick. Kago tells the princess that Akiro is falling in love with her only because of the power of the pact. After the pact is annulled, he will definitely leave her. After hearing those words, Shiori was extremely shocked. The next morning, the two went to a traditional Japanese house to perform the ritual. Mamaji brought out sacred wine, which was used to worship the gods of the island. Akiro drinks it, and the stinger appears on his forehead. The princess will use forceps to remove Akiro's stinger. They were both very scared because they were afraid their feelings would disappear. Shiori used all her courage to pull the stinger out. Shiori asked do you still love me? Akiro hugged Shiori and said I love you. Mamaji pulled Kago away because their mission was done. 